Hello everybody, in this video I will show ASP.NET GridView plus jQuery tips and tricks uh, article. Uh, here the purpose of this article is to, uh, to list records and to also uh, perform code operation like create, read, update and delete operation uh, page of the first part. To start that, first, uh, first I will click load so that I can load the GridView data. When I am clicking load, then it will directly go to the gridview data.aspx page to note that uh, we ha I have only two aspx pages default.aspx that will work as a placeholder of uh, mm, of the gridview and gridview data.aspx is the actual gridview let me go through with the default.aspx code I have some style sheet just to mend uh, then I have one, two uh, link First, it load link and secondly add link. Load link and this is the add link. And then I have a form that will be used to uh, to add a new record or to update the new record. And then I have a couple of JavaScript code. When I click load. And then what will happen is that load give view data will fire. You can see it here. Load give you data that is using jQuery post uh, method and posting the event to gridview data.aspx page that is gridview data.aspx here and passing the start index and the number uh, page number uh, as the parameter you can see that a start index is 0 and page number I am passing is 1 a start index means the come here here you can see that I have a handle request object that is just to uh, write any uh, set any uh, variable like in case in my case start row index was 0 and that this page was passed as 1 you can see here that I had passed 0 and 1 here the same was passed here start row index is start and this page is page number start and page number so I have 0 and 1 and so uh, the start row index and the this page uh, variable value is set and there is nothing is into this handle request object now now I uh, will bind my grid. So I have this SQL command and data table and using I'm SQL connection and SQL command object. I'm trying to bind the grid. Get the data from the database and then binding it and then closing it. <coughs> Note that I have another method called do paging. Do paging takes the current page number, total record count and the page size. Page size means how many records I need to say in a single page and perform some logic and based on that it renders the page number on that page so now uh, let us uh, let me click add when I clicked add button then what happened is that uh, you can see here the the link of add is ID, ID is add link and when add link will be clicked then what will happen is that one JavaScript event will fire and, and that will show the div edit box and then it will set some value it will make the default value as uh, 0 or null or empty div edit box is nothing but my div that contains all the table information you can see here now let me add one record new record new address new phone and new city once I click submit then what happened is that you can see here that when I'm clicking submit, then update insert the data JavaScript event is firing, and that is posting the page on GitHub data dot aspx with these many parameters: name, p address, p c t, p phone, and edit id. Here, edit id id will be zero because that's the default id here, and it is going to handle request. Let us go to handle request and see there is no start row index on this page so uh, it is it is not coming to this row you can notice that whatever parameter is being passed from default.aspx I am receiving those parameters as request.form because this is not uh, this is not a aspx page and post back event but what I am trying to do is I am trying to post uh, uh, from default.aspx to git view data.aspx page so I have to use request.form and then I am just trying to see that if request ID is not null if it is not null then my update insert data 
method will fire and that will pass the request.form.edit id in this case my uh, edit id will be 0 because that's what the default is and that's what I have set when my add link button was clicked you can see default id is 0 and then uh, it will go to the update insert method here I will check if edit id is 0 if it is 0 then it will insert the record into the database if it would have uh, not 0 then it would have updated the record into the database so it is going and then updating the record into the database you can see that one of my new record has been added here and now let us go ahead and try to edit this record so I just click show edit box uh, javascript event is filing So edit box javascript uh, event is here in the default.spx page that is sliding down the grid view you can see here is sliding down uh, the add record uh, uh, div and uh, setting all the diff the value that is there for that particular record into the into the respective text boxes you can see here i am trying to find the uh, row that has been clicked and then each td and then based on the column index i am trying to set the value here and then I'm setting the value of edit ID. Edit ID value is nothing but the ID that uh, ID of that uh, the uh, a sub submit but again and will go to the uh, the update insert method. You can notice that update edit ID is 14 here, so it will not go into the insert condition. It will go to the update condition and update the data and then again bound the data here. See that it is bounded. Now let us go ahead and see how to delete the record. Delete and it is confirming. Uh, what will happen is that it will uh, fire the delete record. Uh, delete record. Java delete uh, on the click of delete link. I am calling delete record uh, a JavaScript uh, event that you can see here in this default.aspx page that is posting the data into get view data.aspx page with passing the delete ID as the uh, record that has been clicked so let us uh, go to default.aspx page and see how it's working it will handle request and then it is going to because delete id is not null so it is going to delete uh, a record uh, event and it is passing the uh, record id that needs to be deleted and ultimately this record is being deleted here and then again the it is being listed and now uh, I have shown here that you can delete a record by double clicking also when you will double click then this event will fire you can see here that I have written on double click table tier td and double click on double click it is asking me are you sure to delete are you sure to delete and then it will find the first column that has the id and you will fire the delete record event here so let us go and head and see that again it is having delete record event here and then that record is being deleted here uh, this this video tutorial will be useful that is explaining uh, the article asp.net gateway plus jquery tips and tricks uh, you can see that i have also uh, given some on uh, on mouse over effect and select effect in this grid view, in this grid view. Uh, you can see that I have done that using uh, this grid view table dot mouse over effect. This will when when the mouse over will happen on the grid view, then it will add a highlight row uh, into that go out from that row. Then it will remove that highlight row. You can see here that it is happening now when i'm clicking that particular row then what is uh, happening is i'm adding the class called select so when i click it then i'm adding the class called select that is making the background color of the uh, grid view row to brown you can see that i have written these uh, css classes here select is making the background color as brown highlight row is making the background i hope uh, uh, this article would be useful uh, thanks for watching and keep visiting .netfunda.com and sharing your knowledge. Thank you.